So I'm here with Pete, um, who I've known for a long time, CEO at Agenera, and uh, great to have you here again this evening. Yeah, it's great. To thanks be here, for Michael. your support on the yeah. survey. We enjoy having you as a collaborator. Now, this has been a big year for you. You've uh, uh, announced a number of initiatives in the cloud, and I'd love you to just start off by giving us a sense of, of what brought you to those initiatives and what they are, and then we can roll from that. Yeah, we, we, re we recognized um, some time ago, as a lot of people have, that you know, the world's moving towards an as a service type model, subscription model. Um, pay as you go and easy access to, um, to services. So last year we acquired a, a, a cloud management company to, and we matched that software with our traditional PAM manager or infrastructure management software and we're able to bring that product to market to give our customers the ability to very quickly deploy a cloud, uh, not only giving the customers a traditional cloud for virtual components as you'd see in a public or even a private cloud environment, but also give them the ability to build out physical clouds and metal as a service. Um, and also bridge that to public clouds like Amazon as well. So we sort of try to give the customer um, as many options as they can to help fulfill their needs. So Pete, the brilliant thing about this is, I mean, the survey you know, highlights it very specifically. People obviously don't want to jump straight to the public cloud and take right. everything there, and it's not practical to even think about that. Right. Tell me, how does this bridge that gap, and, and where do you think people will end up in the split between public, private, and hybrid? So I can tell you what we're seeing and, and where we see this going is um, most of our customers are doing exactly what you said. They don't want to run right to the public cloud. So let's start with the private cloud, but they might want to do some, uh, say, low um, impact work in the public cloud, test dev. Um, yep. um, maybe running some applications that aren't, aren't as middle, mission critical as, say, a back-end type application. So they'll put those in, say, an Amazon or a Rackspace or a Terramark type cloud. And you don't care which one it is? Uh, we don't care, no. We have connectors into Amazon, OpenStack type clouds as well. Yep. And uh, we want to, again, give the customer a choice. Yep. Um, but what we're seeing them do is from a, with our product, from a single pallet, they can drag in private cloud resources and public cloud resources. And build mix them, them together, the mix them together pool? in the same pool. Hit a build button and then their resources are deployed to either private or public or both. Um, and is there some intelligence between where the workloads are run so that people can actually um, effectively see um, a, there, a cloud burst? There isn't, but that's kind of where it's going, right? right. So today, customers very um, are keenly aware of what they want to run public and what they want to run private. Yep. You can imagine, uh, not too distant future, they'll say, look, I don't care where it runs, it's got to have this service level, it's got to have this price point. Yep. You tell me where it should run based on those inputs, and that's yep. kind of where it's going. So you're headed there, so you'll create policy-driven workloads, Absolutely. for example. Right. Right. And then how are you handling things like governance and compliance, because that's obviously always a big challenge. Right, so, um, it, it, Difficultly, <laughs> as you can tell <laughs> well, by my one, answer. It's yeah. one of the, the inhibitors it's, it's, to cloud. Yes, so we, it's we very challenging, it. right? So uh, it depends on whose governance and whose compliance you're talking about. If you're talking about medical, yeah. that's different than talking about government, yeah. right? And so government is, is fairly straightforward because they've got a good set of rules about yeah. which things you have to comply to and those you can you know, have the right people that have the right clearances or the right certifications. You can have the right processes around your cloud to make sure that they conform to the government. Um, Things like medical and financial where there's personal data involved is a little more tricky and that really comes down to security and yep. making sure you have the security. Even at that point, it's not clear some of these customers will even trust you yet. They're, they tend yes. to be more conservative yeah. than, the, um, than say the leading edge type customers. And of course we've seen some fairly major initiatives this year like such, such as Amazon's GovCloud right. uh, that are going to take a, a, a stance on that. Right. So what are you thinking about in terms of how you'll approach those problems? Will you create specific solutions that will go for vertical? I don't think we'll do that. Um, we're, you know, we're going to continue to to push towards more of a horizontal solution with regards to the cloud um, platform not, level infrastructure. Well, and also um, traditional, if you can say cloud's traditional at this point, public clouds like yep. Amazon, Terramark, Rackspace, et cetera, yep. uh, software. Um, but we're not going to verticalize yet on something like what Amazon did with their GovCloud. Um, right. It's just for us, it's not, you know, it's not time for that yet. Makes sense. Well, now the survey is obviously a big part of what we're talking about this evening. So, what are some of the drivers that you're seeing that are that are making cloud more and more acceptable, or actually taking usage? I mean, it's the classic drivers around: um, want to pay as you go, want to have elasticity, want to be able to grow and shrink resources, um, want to lower their opex, reduce their capex. Um, you know, those are still there. Yeah, absolutely. And those are huge drivers for our customers. Yep. Um, we're just starting to see the customers get to that next level of um, you know, the deployment of their applications where they want to do some policy-based things and they want yeah. to um, let the software um, make more decisions for them based on things like service levels rather than um, some IT person trying to figure out which app should run where. 
Great. What about inhibitors? I mean, we've talked about a couple here, governance compliance being of example. Security is always an yeah, inhibitor. Always um, you, know, you get um, pricing can you know, be an inhibitor, right? I mean, it's uh, for a, a cloud provider like us, we're not going to um, run into the Walmart of cloud like Amazon, right? right. And so you've got to be able to add value on top to differentiate yourself um, from a Walmart type um, solution. So uh, you've got to be able to price your solution to a point that um, attracts the customer but provides enough value so you can still get a premium on top of that compared to some of the larger public cloud players because if we all race to that bottom, we, we know who's going to win. Yeah, absolutely. And there'll be economies of scale game. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Well, good. Um, good to have you here. Can't, can't resist asking you the one, yeah. one question that yes. uh, we should be leading with, which is future of cloud, obviously. So what can we look forward to in the next year? The next year? You know, I don't, I don't see the next year, um, I, don't, I don't see major breakthroughs in the next year because I, th I, I think the, if you ask what, what are we going to see in the next five years, next three years to five Feel years, free. yeah, Feel I mean, free. I think we're going to start seeing OpenStack's going to take um, a lot more market, I believe. Um, I don't think it's ready yet in the next year, but I think it will be in a, in a mm -hmm. few years. I don't think you're going to see more plugins to that OpenStack uh, ecosystem, so I think you'll see a lot of developments around that. Uh, I think you'll see some of the automation and the policy that we already spoke about um, yep. start finding its way into the solutions. And I think you'll see the customers much like uh, the 90s where they were afraid of the internet and internet commerce and then yep. uh, now everybody's very very um, comfortable with that. I think you'll see the customers start to feel more comfortable with security and control in the cloud and uh, you'll see a lot more embracement of it. Great, well I look forward to welcoming you back next year and we'll see look whether we were right. <laughs> okay. All right, Michael. Thanks a lot.